The Pilgrim's Progress, Part Two, Chapter Two. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, Part Two, Chapter Two. The Wicket Gate. By this time, Christiana was got on her way, and Mercy went along with her. So as they went, her children being there also, Christiana began to discourse. And mercy, said Christiana, I take this as an unexpected favour, that thou shouldst set forth out of doors with me, to accompany me a little in my way. Then said young mercy, for she was but young, If I thought it would be a good purpose to go with you, I would never go near the town any more. Well, mercy, said Christiana, Cast in thy lot with me. I well know what will be the end of our pilgrimage. My husband is where he would not be but for all the gold in the Spanish mines, nor shalt thou be turned away, though thou goest but upon my invitation. The king who hath sent for me and my children is one that delighteth in mercy. Besides, if thou wilt, I will hire thee, and thou shalt go along with me as my servant, yet we will have all things in common betwixt thee and me, only go along with me. But how shall I be sure that I also shall be welcomed? Had I this hope, but from one that can tell, I would have no hesitation at all, but would go, being helped by him that can help, though the way be never so tedious. Well, loving mercy, I will tell thee what thou shalt do. Go with me to the wicket gate, and there I will further inquire for thee, and if there thou dost not meet with encouragement, I will be content that thou shalt return to thy place. I also will pay thee for thy kindness, which thou showest to me and my children, in the accompanying of us in our way as thou dost. Then I will go thither, and will take what shall follow, and the Lord grant that my lot may there fall, even as the King of Heaven shall have his heart upon me. Christiana was then glad at her heart, not only that she had a companion, but also for that she had prevailed with this poor maid to fall in love with her own salvation. So they went on together, and Mercy began to weep. Then said Christiana, Wherefore weepeth my sister so? Alas, said she, who can but lament, that shall but rightly consider what a state and condition my poor relations are in, that yet remain in our sinful town? And that which makes my grief the more heavy is, because they have no one to teach them, nor to tell them what is to come. Tenderness becometh pilgrims, and thou dost for thy friends as my good Christian did for me, when he left me. He mourned for that I would not heed nor regard him, but his Lord and ours did gather up his tears, and put them into his bottle, and now both I and thou— and these, my sweet babes, are reaping the fruit, in benefit of them, I hope, mercy, that these tears of thine will not be lost, for the truth hath said that they that sow in tears shall reap in joy, in singing, and he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Then said Mercy, Let the most blessed be my guide, if it be his blessed will, unto his gate, into his fold, up to his holy hill and never let him suffer me to swerve or turn aside from his free grace and holy ways whate'er shall me betide and let him gather them of mine that i have left behind lord make them pray that they may be thine with all their heart and mind now my old friend proceeded and said but when christiana came to the slough of despond she began to be at a stand for said she this is the place in which my dear husband had like to have been smothered with mud she perceived also that notwithstanding the command of the king to make this place for pilgrims good yet it was rather worse than formerly so i asked if that was true yes said the old gentleman too true for many there be that pretend to be the king's labourers and say they are for mending the king's highway that bring dirt and dung instead of stones and so mar instead of mending here christiana therefore with her boys did make a stand but said mercy come let us venture only let us be wary then they looked well to their steps and made shift to get staggeringly over yet christiana had to have been in and that not once nor twice now they had no sooner got over but they thought they heard words that said unto them blessed is she that believeth 
For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Then they went on again, and said mercy to Christiana. Had I as good ground to hope for a loving reception at the wicket gate as you, I think no slough of despond would discourage me. Well, said the other, you know your trouble, and I know mine. And, good friend, we shall have enough evil before we come at our journey's end. For can it be imagined that the people that design to attain such excellent glories as we do, and that are so envied that happiness as we are, but that we shall meet with what fears, with what troubles and afflictions they can possibly assault us with, that hate us? And now Mr. Sagacity left me to dream out my dream by myself. Wherefore, methought I saw Christiana and Mercy and the boys go all of them up to the gate, to which when they were come they betook themselves to a short debate about how they must manage their calling at the gate and what should be said unto him that did open unto them so it was concluded since christiana was the eldest that she should knock for entrance and that she should speak to him that did open for the rest so christiana began to knock and as her poor husband did she knocked and knocked again but instead of any that answered they all thought that they heard as if a dog came barking upon them, a dog, and a great one too, and this made the women and the children afraid. Nor durst they for a while to knock any more, for fear the mastiff should fly upon them. Now, therefore, they were greatly tumbled up and down in their minds, and knew not what to do. Knock they durst not, for fear of the dog. Go back they durst not, for fear the keeper of the gate should espy them as they so went and should be offended with them. At last they thought of knocking again, and knocked more loudly than they did at first. Then said the keeper of the gate, Who is there? So the dog left off to bark, and he opened unto them. Then Christiana made low obeisance, and said, Let not our lord be offended with his handmaidens, for that we have knocked at his princely gate. Then said the keeper, Whence come ye, and what is it that you would have? Christiana answered, We are come from whence Christian did come, and upon the same errand as he, to wit, to be, if it shall please you, graciously admitted by this gate, into the way that leads to the celestial city. And I answer, my lord, in the next place, that I am Christiana, once the wife of Christian, that now is gotten above. With that the keeper of the gate did marvel, saying, What? Is she now become a pilgrim, that, but a while ago, hated that life? Then she bowed her head, and said, Yes, and so are these my sweet babes also. Then he took her by the hand, and led her in, and said also, Suffer the little children to come unto me. And with that he shut up the gate. This done, he called to a trumpeter that was above, over the gate, to entertain Christiana with shouting and the sound of trumpet for joy. So he obeyed and sounded, and filled the air with his melodious notes. Now all this while poor Mercy did stand without trembling and crying, for fear that she was rejected. But when Christiana had got admittance for herself and her boys, then she began to make intercession for Mercy. My lord, I have a companion of mine that stands yet without, that is come hither upon the same account as myself, one that is much troubled in her mind for that she comes, as she thinks, without sending for, whereas I was sent to by my husband's king to come. Now Mercy began to be very impatient, for each minute was as long to her as an hour. Wherefore she prevented Christiana from asking for her more fully by knocking at the gate herself, and she knocked then so loud that she made Christiana to start. Then said the keeper of the gate, Who is there? and said Christiana, It is my friend. So he opened the gate and looked out, but Mercy was fallen down without in a swoon, for she fainted, and was afraid that no gate would be opened to her. Then he took her by the hand, and said, Maiden, I bid thee arise. Oh, sir, said she, I am faint, there is scarce life left in me. But he answered that, One one said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. Fear not, but stand upon thy feet, and tell me wherefore thou art come. 
i am come for that unto which i was never invited as my friend christiana was hers was from the king and mine was but from her wherefore i fear i presume did she desire thee to come with her to this place yes and as my lord sees i am come and if there is any grace and forgiveness of sins to spare i beseech that i thy poor handmaiden may be partaker thereof then he took her again by the hand and led her gently in and said i pray for all them that believe on me by what means soever they come unto me then said he to those that stood by fetch something and give it to mercy to smell on thereby to stay her fainting so they fetched her a bundle of myrrh and a while after she was revived and now was christiana and her boys and mercy received of the lord at the head of the way and spoke kindly unto by him then said they yet further unto him we are sorry for our sins and beg of our lord his pardon and further information what we must do i grant pardon said he by word and deed by word in the promise of forgiveness by deed in a way i obtained it take the first from my lips with a kiss and the other as it shall be revealed now i saw in my dream that he spake many good words unto them whereby they were greatly gladded he also had them up to the top of the gate and showed them by what deed they were saved and told them withal that that sight they would have again as they went along the way to their comfort so he left them a while in the summer parlour below where they entered into a talk by themselves and thus christiana began o oh lord how glad am i that we are gotten hither so you well may but i of all have cause to leap for joy i thought one time as i stood at the gate because i knocked and none did answer that all our labour had been lost especially when that ugly cur made such a heavy barking against us but my worst fear was after i saw that you were taken into his favour and that all was left behind now i thought it is fulfilled which is written two women shall be grinding in the mill the one shall be taken and the other left i had much ado to forbear crying out undone undone and afraid i was to knock any more but when i looked up to see what was written over the gate i took courage i also thought that i must either knock again or die so i knocked but i cannot tell how for my spirit now struggled betwixt life and death can you not tell how you knocked i am sure your knocks were so earnest that the very sound of them made me start i thought i never heard such knocking in all my life i thought she would come in by violent hands or take the kingdom by storm alas to be in my case who that so was could but have done so you saw that the door was shut upon me and that there was a most cruel dog thereabout who i say that was so faint-hearted as i would not have knocked with all their might but pray what said my lord to my rudeness was he not angry with me when he heard your lumbering noise he gave a wonderful innocent smile i believe what you did pleased him well enough for he showed no sign to the contrary but i marvel in my heart why he keeps such a dog had i known that afore i should not have had heart enough to have ventured myself in this manner but now we are in we are in and i am glad with all my heart i will ask if you please next time he comes down why he keeps such a filthy cur in his yard i hope he will not take it amiss i do said the children and persuade him, him to hang him, him for we are afraid he will bite us, us when we go hence, hence. So at last he came down to them again, and Mercy fell to the ground on her face before him, and worshipped, and said, Let my lord accept the offering of praise which I now offer unto him with my lips. So he said unto her, Peace be to thee, stand up. But she continued upon her face, and said, Righteous art thou, O lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments wherefore dost thou keep so cruel a dog in thy yard at the sight of which such women and children as we are ready to fly from the gate with fear he answered and said that dog has another owner he also is kept close in another man's ground only my pilgrims hear his barking he belongs to the castle which you can see there at the distance but can come up to the walls of this place he has frightened many an honest pilgrim from worse to better 
by the great voice of his roaring. Indeed, he that owneth him doth not keep in out of any good will, to me or mine, but with intent to keep the pilgrims from coming to me, and that they may be afraid to come and knock at this gate for entrance. Sometimes also he is broken out, and has worried some that I love. But I take all at present patiently. I also give my pilgrims timely help, so that they are not delivered up to his power to do with them what his doggish nature would prompt him to. But what, my beloved one, I should suppose, hadst thou known even so much beforehand, thou wouldst not have been afraid of a dog. The beggars that go from door to door will, rather than lose a supposed arms, run the danger of the bawling, barking, and biting too of a dog. And shall a dog in another man's yard, a dog whose barking I turn to the profit of pilgrims, keep any one from coming to me? I deliver them from the lions, their darling, from the power of the dog. Then said Mercy, I confess my ignorance, I spake what I understood not. I acknowledge that thou doest all things well. Then Christiana began to talk of their journey, and to inquire after the way. So he fed them, and washed their feet, and set them in the way of his steps, according as he had dealt with her husband before. So I saw in my dream that they walked on in their way, and had the weather very comfortable to them. Then Christiana began to sing. Blessed be the day that I began a pilgrim for to be, and blessed also be the man that there to move it me. Tis true, twas long ere I began to seek to live for ever, but now I run fast as I can, tis better late than never. Our tears to joy, our fears to faith, are turned as we see. Thus our beginning, as one saith, shows what our end will be. Now there was, on the other side of the wall that fenced in the way up which Christiana and her companions were to go, a garden, and that garden belonged to him whose was that barking dog of whom mention was made before. And some of the fruit-trees that grew in the garden shot their branches over the wall, and being mellow, they that found them did gather them up, and oft eat of them, to their hurt. So Christiana's boys, as boys are apt to do, being pleased with the trees and the fruit that did hang thereon, did bend the branches down, and pluck the fruit, and begin to eat. Their mother did also chide them for so doing, but still the boys went on. Well, said she, my sons, you do wrong, for that fruit is none of ours. But she did not know that it did belong to the enemy. I'll warrant you, if she had, she would have been ready to die for fear. But that passed, and they went on their way. Now, by that they were gone about two bowshots from the place that led them unto the way, they espied two very ill-favoured ones coming down apace to meet them. With that Christiana and Mercy, her friend, covered themselves with their veils, and so kept on their journey. The children also went on before, so that at last they met together. Then they that came down to meet them came just up to the women, as if they would embrace them. But Christiana said, Stand back, or go peaceably by, as you should. Yet these two, as men that are deaf, regarded not Christiana's words, but began to lay hands upon them. At that Christiana, waxing very wroth, spurned at them with her feet. Mercy also, as well as she could, did what she could to shift them. Christiana again said to them, Stand back and be gone, for we have no money to lose, being pilgrims, as you see, and such too as live upon the charity of our friends. Then said one of the two men, We make no assault upon you for money, but I come out to tell you that, if you will grant one small request which we shall ask, we will make women of you for ever. Now Christiana, imagining what they should mean, made answer again. We will neither hear, nor regard, nor yield to what you shall ask. We are in haste, and cannot stay. Our business is a business of life or death. So again she and her companions made a fresh attempt to go past them, 
and they lettered them in their way, and they said, We intend no hurt to your lives. It is another thing we would have. I, quoth Christiana, You would have us, body and soul, for I know it is for that you are come. But we will die rather upon the spot than to suffer ourselves to be brought into such snares as shall risk the loss of our well-being hereafter. And with that they both shrieked out and cried, Murder! 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 And so put themselves under those laws that are provided for the protection of women. But the men still made their approach upon them, with design to prevail against them. They therefore cried out again, now they being as i said far from the gate in at which they came their voices were heard from where they were thither wherefore some of the house came out and knowing it was christiana's tongue they made haste to her relief but by the time they were got within sight of them the women were in a very great terror the children also stood crying by then did he that came in for their relief call out to the ruffians saying what is that thing you do would you make my lord's people to do wrong? He also attempted to take them, but they did make their escape over the wall into the garden of the man to whom the great dog belonged. So the dog became their protector. This reliever then came up to the women and asked them how they did. So they answered, We thank thy prince pretty well, only we have been somewhat affrighted. We thank thee also for that thou camest in to our help, otherwise we had been overcome so after a few more words this reliever said as followeth i marvelled much when you were entertained at the gate above being ye knew that ye were but weak women that you ask not the lord for a conductor then might you have avoided these troubles and dangers for he would have granted you one alas said christiana we were taken so with our present blessing that dangers to come were forgotten by us besides who could have thought that so near the king's palace there could have lurked such naughty ones indeed it had been well for us had we asked our lord for one but since our lord knew it would be for our profit i wonder he sent not one along with us it is not always necessary to grant things not asked for lest by doing so they become of little value but when the want of a thing is felt that he who needs it feels its preciousness and so when it is given it will be used had my lord granted you a conductor you would not either have so bewailed that oversight of yours in not asking for one as now you have occasion to do so all things work for good and tend to make you more wary shall we go back again to my lord and confess our folly and ask for one your confession of your folly i will present him with to go back again you need not for in all places where you shall come you will find no want at all for in every one of my lord's lodgings which he has prepared for the care of his pilgrims there is sufficient to furnish them against all attempts whatsoever. But, as I said, he will be asked of by them to do it for them. And tis a poor thing that is not worth asking for. When he had thus said, he went back to his place, and the pilgrims went on their way. Then said Mercy, What a sudden blank is here! I made account we had been past all danger, and that we should never see sorrow more. Thy innocence, my sister, said Christiana to Mercy, may excuse thee much, but as for me, fault is so much the greater, for that I saw the danger before I came out of the doors, and yet did not provide for it when provision might have been had. I am therefore much to be blamed. Then said Mercy, How knew you this before you came from home? Pray open to me this riddle. Why, I will tell you. Before I set foot out of doors one night, as I lay in my bed, I had a dream about this, for methought I saw two men, as like these as ever any in the world could look stand at my bed's feet, plotting how they might prevent my salvation. I will tell you their very words. They said, it was when I was in my troubles, What shall we do with this woman? For she cries out, waking and sleeping, for forgiveness. If she be suffered to go on as she begins, we shall lose her as we have lost her husband. This you know might have made me take heed, and have provided when provision might have been had. Well, said Mercy, as by this neglect we have been made to behold our own imperfections, so our Lord has taken occasion thereby to make manifest the riches of his grace, 
for he, as we see, has followed us with unasked kindness, and has delivered us from their hands that were stronger than we, of his mere good pleasure. End of Part 2, Chapter 2「Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about Jesus and what the gospel means to you, then hit the video shown on the left of the screen and please don't forget to subscribe. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless your day.